What have you thought of your group so far in spring? Uh, pretty good. You know, I just got done talking to him, and one of the big things that we wanted to focus on this spring was I got six returning guys that are rotating. So I already know that they can play football, um, but and we got to bring some others along, the younger guys. So this is a great opportunity for them. But um, they're getting about 15 to 20 quality reps a day in spring, each of those six. I call them the six, the, the returners. Uh, and they got to make the most of it. And um, most of them are. And I, they need to visibly feel like they made a jump this spring or they're wasting their time, my time, everybody's time. So that's the kind of thing we're preaching right now with those guys. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased. What does it do for you guys to have so many returners? Like, how does that change this point in the season where you're able to do different things than if you're bringing in a whole new group? Yeah, you know, well, you could be um, – one of the things that first sticks out is you could be a little more creative in your play calling and your play, play structures, right? So you could do some more motions. You can do some shiftings. You can get – you know, a little bit more involved into the off offense, a little bit deeper into the weeds because those guys already should already know your base offense. So that's the luxury of having returners like that is you can be a little bit more uh, more creative in your play calling. What are your expectations for a guy like Jordan Hudson this spring? I want to see him make a – I want to see him put himself in a position to be drafted in the first two rounds. That's why I tell all my guys. Like, um, I'm not here – to, I, I don't want to coach guys that want to be average. Like, that, that's just wasting my time, man. I'm too old for that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I want to coach guys that want to be great. I want to be coach guys that want to be day one calls on, on draft day. Um, and that's what I'm preaching to him. And if he's not, as long as he's being the best version of himself, then I'm happy and it's a success. But that's the message that we're preaching, and I'm preaching to him. How does he get there? To, to, that, to that level. Yeah, so, you know, he was uh, a fre basically a freshman last year for us, right? And so he was just learning the offense and everything. And he's so far from where he was at the beginning of camp last year. So um, he's getting on the other side of learning the base, and we can be a little bit more creative with him. He To get there, he needs to be moved around. Can't just be standing over there on the right side or the left side, hanging out at outside receiver on every play. You want to be great. You want to be a great player. You got to get moved around so we can get you the ball and uh, take take advantage of matchups on safeties, linebackers, option routes, verticals on safeties, um, things like that. So he's got to be able to get a great grasp of the offense so he can get moved around. We saw Jackson Lavender get some nice reps today during the open period. How far has he come? You know, since come from, from his true freshman year to this point. Yeah, you know, I thought Jackson actually had a pretty decent spring for a true freshman last year, um, and then he was, you know, do, he's been doing well. So um, excited about him. He comes off the ball. He's a coach's kid. So the understanding the base offense, he's already on the other side of that with his, with that level. So I, I'm excited about him. Now that you've seen Ashton get out there for you, what have you thought about him so far and where is he at, would you say? Yeah, the, you know, the first, um, uh, probably the thing that I noticed is he can catch the ball. He's got great hands. Uh, and so as long as he has great hands, he has speed. It's hard right now. We're only in day four. And so sometimes when you feel a player is playing slow, he's still processing the information. And a lot of times, you know, when you're in a fast-paced offense, you're getting the signals from the sideline. You're not in a huddle. So, like, not like you may know the play, but now you're processing a signal. So you're, like, you're processing information, and people are yelling at you, hurry up, snap the ball. And, I mean, everything is just kind of – he's in that mode right now, gradually working his way out of it. And it's so – hard to tell how good a guy is or how talented he is until you get him out of that thinking mode so um, but he's made some great plays in camp so I'm very pleased with his hands for sure and he has some great quickness for a big man that's what he's what he's shown when you go back to uh, 2022 and you've mm -hmm. got Rasheed gets nearly 100 uh, catches and then last year no one crosses 50 you'll see a lot of success with just spreading the ball out how did that kind of inform how you built out this wide receiver in this year? Obviously, you had six returners, but you brought in more potential playmakers. Yeah. How did that kind of impact how you guys built out? Uh, what it does, okay, when, when you're rotating six guys, practice is so much better because, like, you say, like, you have a guy like Rasheed, well, his backup, yeah, my, my man's not playing very much, right? You know, so he, and he knows that going into, you know, into practice every week. And so practice – Come week 10, he knows, hey, I might get like eight plays Saturday. So, you know, practice could become 
kind of drudgery to him. But when you're rotating six dudes, man, they know they're going to be in. They know they're going to be in quality, meaningful reps. Uh, and so they're paying attention to the little minute details, right, because they know they're going to impact the game. And so practice, to me, is, is so much better when you have a bunch of talent because they all know that they're going to play in the game. You had Brandon and Rasheed in the Super Bowl. Yes. Uh, how, how much do you lean on maybe tape of those guys to kind of make a point to some of your receivers, and whether it be from college or you know what they're doing now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, when I told the guys, I said, think about it, and I would point to the chair. I said, you guys just got done watching the Super Bowl. The dude sat in that chair like a year ago. Right? So, like, right there. Okay? So, um, you can do it. And it's proof that a guy from SMU can do that, and then he could go on and he could be the leading uh, um, target outside or receiver type guy for the Super Bowl team. Right? So, there's proof right there. And then we use Brandon's film all the time, um, especially on a lot of his inside breaking routes. And he does a tremendous job of power stepping, ripping through, and, and is running just great quality reps. And then on top of that, shows he's making millions of dollars, but the guy's blocking his tail off. And it just goes to show, hey, man, you need to do that. Don't wait till you get there to try to figure and find all that stuff. You better start doing it right now. And so uh, that's great information to use, yeah. Is there a guy like Mucci or any others that has really stepped up in maybe a leadership role this spring for you? Uh, you know, um, Moochie is a work in progress in that area, all right, because he's more of a really quiet guy, and, and that's okay. Been around a lot of quiet guys that have been great players, right? Um, and so um, the big thing about, you know, what Moochie basically needs to work on is just his intermediate routes because he is a fast guy. He is going to be able to scare defenses. He's going to get on the top of them. Now, do you give indicators away when you're running intermediate routes? Can they tell the difference between you coming off the ball on a deep ball or you coming off the ball and you're going to run a dig? So those are the kind of things that he needs to work on this spring that I've been on him about, but very pleased with with what he's been doing. And lastly, uh, Roderick and uh, Jake in the slot returning yes. for you. What, what do you want to see from those two and, and how much does having those two back really help, like you said, kind of the creativity of what you guys Oh, man, do? yes. Because Junior's a guy you could put in, is it running back? The dude can throw a ball. Um, he blocks really well. Uh, you could put him all over the place. I want to play him at outside receiver some this year because of his dynamic feet. Um, both of those guys are guys you could use to run option routes out of the backfield or at the slot position. Um, and then I, I count on them as being leaders as they go out um, and telling, lining up the outside receivers at the perfect spot. Cause those two guys are like, they're just phenomenal football guys and they understand the details of football. And so they can line everybody up and just having those guys is it's a tremendous luxury.